any large gathering. This is the state of our world today. People are afraid. Uh, COVID-19 has come to us and uh, people are dying daily. We are now in the thousands of deaths, uh, over a million people has been infected. Researchers are scrambling, seeking to find an answer to this problem. Scientists are seeking for cures. We are in a serious crisis. Uh, we are afraid to even leave our homes. If we need to shop for grocery or to venture on the outside, we realize that we put our families at risk even to go outside to get much needed food. The risk is high. And especially on this weekend, we saw our prime minister came out from uh, to us, even from his isolation, to tell us and to ask us to kindly stay within our homes because the temptation, having seen the brilliant sunshine on the outside, and having been locked away for so many weeks, we would want to get out. But the probability of being infected just by going out is so high. The risk is too great for us. We find ourselves as parents seeking to work from home and juggling homework and child care, trying to be teachers and parents at the same time. As our educators try to connect with our children via Zoom and Skype and and WhatsApp and all these things, we have found creative ways to teach our children now. But the challenge is before us. As ministers of the gospel and pastors and church leaders, we are trying to find new ways to connect with our people. And so we are grateful this morning for those who have been able to join us via our webpage here in, in Holloway. Uh, we are thankful that we can able to still meet our congregation even as we come together today for a day of prayer and fasting. We think about our health care workers who are on the front line working tirelessly to care for the sick while they are worrying about their own family and their own safety. We are concerned about all of these things. <clears throat> we are afraid nonetheless. Many people don't know what to do. The question is, what do I do in the midst of this pandemic? Going out put our families at risk. Yet if we don't go out, we don't get food to eat. We have to go out. Some of us have to go out in order to pay the bills. We ask ourselves, will the stores continue to have enough food and supplies? We have the assurance of our government that these things will not run out. Will we ever be able to get to the stores? The queues in every store these days. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Or what do we want to do about this? Is there anything that we can do? The fact of the matter is, while most of us have never experienced a time like this before, this story is not new. All we have to do is to go back a little bit in our history and we will see that there have been pandemics in our history of humanity, just there, back there in 2000, between 2005 and 2012, the AIDS, HIV pandemic killed 36 million people in our world. Go back a little bit more, you'll see the flu pandemic, you'll see all these pandemics that broke out, but humanity has survived them all. <laughs> Throughout history, we have faced these dangerous times. And when fear gripped us and became our companion. But my beloved brethren, this morning I want to share with you from the Bible, even as we look for some of us, it, we may think that it is the fulfillment of scriptures. There are all kinds of theory out there, but I want you to know and be assured today that whatever you're feeling, our God is still in charge of this world. The Bible tells us that Israel and God's people lived in a time when they also experience fear. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, we read of Judah being led by the king, Jehoshaphat. And the Bible tells us that Jehoshaphat and his people were gripped by fear. A similar circumstances came among them. It was not in their case 
a virus that frightened them, but instead it was an invading army sitting on the banks of their kingdom, looking over, about to get together so that they can come in with the intent of destroying God's people. My beloved brethren, this virus has absolutely no respect of person. It will take us out if we allow ourselves to be overexposed to it. So it is incumbent upon us that we heed the call of our leaders. If we go to the Bible story, we'll discover that these enemies that surrounded Judah at the time of Jehoshaphat, there were many, too many people. And of course, they were well harmed. And this was a great army ready to invade and to destroy God's people. But in the midst of all of this, Judah's eyes is turned upon Jehoshaphat. Why? Because he is the king and there are expectations of him. He was expected to protect and to guide Judah during this time of crisis. But for him, the enemy was too many and the enemy was too strong. Nobody knew what to do. As far as the circumstances look, Judah was doomed. The question is, were they? Today, I want to say our situation may seem hopeless because everyone and everything seems to have been lost by this virus. This virus is moving across the world, seems to be unstoppable. There are countries who are now reporting that they have gotten some degree of control over it. But I want to suggest to you that when God's people found themselves in the midst of such a storm, the king, when he found himself helpless, the Bible said that he found one thing that he could do. In 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 3, the Bible says, And Jehoshaphat seek the Lord. In the midst of his fear, he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim throughout Judah a fast for all the people. Today, my beloved brethren, we join with the world church as together like Israel, learning from Israel experience, we are calling a day of prayer and fasting. Because desperate times like these, when, when our lives are threatened, moment by moment, we must turn to a God who is able to sustain and protect and preserve our lives. Like Israel, we turn to God. He set himself to seek his God. You see, this was an intentional choice that he made. He was afraid, but he would not let fear overwhelm him and his people. Some of us might be fearful today, but I want you to, to know that if we turn our face to our God, our God will respond to us and he will deliver us. The Bible says that he chose rather than to be busy and to try to do other things, he chose to proclaim a fast. He invited others to join him to seek God, and they came together. So Judah gathered together, the Bible tells us, to ask help from the Lord. Verse 4, and from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek God. There was a grand gathering of God's people. Everybody stopped what they were doing, and they prayed to God. Why? Because everybody understood the gravity of this situation. Today, I want to say to us in Holloway Church that we must understand the gravity of the situation that we are faced with. And let us come together and call a fast together. This is the grand call for us to get together and seriously pray. We may spend an hour today together during this, this streaming program, but that does not end our discussion. That does not end our seeking of God. Let us continually seek our God in prayer. This was not no normal Wednesday night meeting. This was Israel, Judah, recognizing that their lives are very, their very existence are threatened. They're about to be annihilated by the enemy. My beloved brethren, this virus is serious. It will take us out. But our God is in control. So while fear may grip our hearts, let us seek our God in prayer. You see, my, my brothers and sisters, Joseph and his people prayed. He did not focus so much upon his problem, but he focused upon God. 
In times like these, we must recount God's blessings and God's leadership of the past. He remembered what God had done for Judah and for Israel. My brethren in all the way and all the churches that members who might be with us this, this morning, I want to say to us, let us remember that our God has brought us into 2020 and that he has not left us. Let us recall those victories that we have had, those blessings that God has given unto us. Let's remember, remember those things. Let us remind God of how he has led that we have noticed these things and given thanks to those things while we seek. Because remember that in prayer, it is God who initiates a conversation into which we are privileged to join in. And so we have God's attention. Let's talk to him as we talk to our friend. Jehoshaphat said, oh Lord, oh Father, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? As you read this prayer, he said, are you not God who drove out the inhabitants of the land before you, before your people Israel, and give it to the descendants of Abraham for uh, uh, your friend forever? And he continues this prayer. And as it points out that as Israel dwell in this land, and the Bible says that as he prayed, brethren, as you read that prayer from verses 6 to 11, and you see how, how he points to all the movement of God in the history of Judah. He didn't seek to, have, uh, to offer advice to God. He didn't say, you know, God, I want you to do this and I want you to do that. He just chronicled God's movement in the life of his people. He admitted that, look, we are helpless in the face of this problem. My beloved brethren, we can do the best that we can, but we have to come to the place where we recognize that humanity is helpless in the face of this virus. And like God's people, we come to that place where we turn it over to God. Then just as he stood there at his prayer, he did not run ahead of God. The Bible tells us that Jehoshaphat and the people waited. They waited for God to do something. My beloved brethren, as we wait on God for an answer to our prayers, let us be patient. This is the difficult part, to stay in our homes and wait upon God. To stay in our homes and stay on our knees waiting upon God. Not to become impatient. Not to abandon our faith and say that God has not answered. But to stay and wait upon God. Because our hope is in our God. <coughs> the Bible tells us that they waited and they expected God to respond. And we expect God at the end of our prayer today to respond. And I want to say to you that God did respond. Are you there with me? Our God is a God who hears and answers the prayers of his people. And if you go down just a few verses, you'll notice from verse 14 or so that God responded. The Bible says that God said to, 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 to Jehoshaphat and the people, he says, Do not be afraid or be dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but is God's. Church, I want to remind us today that the battle that we face is not ours because we cannot defeat this enemy. We cannot beat this enemy. This is an unseen enemy. We are not even certain how this enemy comes, from what direction he comes. But we know that our God is in charge. And our God says that all we got to do is be not afraid or be not this made why? Because tomorrow I'm gonna do something great for your for me, for you, my people. Listen, in this story, we see God telling his people, he says, Look, man, you do not have to fight this battle. My beloved brethren, the way that we approach this pandemic is for us to come together as a church community 
wherever we find ourselves, on our knees, talking to our God and allowing our God to fight this great battle for us. The position with which we find ourselves is prostrate before God in desperation because we are facing an unknown, unforeseen enemy who is coming in against us like a rushing wind. But when he does that, our God will raise up the standard against him and this You see, my beloved brethren, the position, we just have to position ourselves, he says. Position yourselves, stand still, and you shall see the salvation of the Lord. That's what God said to Judah and Jerusalem. He says, stand still and you will see the salvation of the Lord. You do not have to fight. Do not fear, he says in verse 17. Do not fear or be dismayed. He starts his response saying, do not fear or be afraid or be dismayed. God concludes his message to Judah. He said, do not fear or be dismayed. Church, I want to say this to you as we come to the place where we pray, let us not fear. Why? Because the Lord says, I've not given you a heart of fear, but one of power and of a sound man. mind. Fear tells us that something is wrong. It is what we do with that fear that, that God talks about. He said, don't become afraid because you have fear. Just the fear must drive you to the one who has the solution to your problem. And that person is God. As you continue to read that story, you would notice, my beloved brethren, that when the, when the Lord spoke to them, he did not tell them what he will do. He says, you just go down. Why? Because God has a plan. You know, there are lots of theories and conspiracy stuff that's going around about where this thing comes from. I want to say to you this one thing. We must be assured that God is in control of this world. And man may have plans. Great might be their plans. But our God has the power to overrule them all. Like we saw in our studies during past water, how God used Babylon and meets the Persian, all these empires. And now we are living in the climax of our history. Let us be assured that our God is in charge. Our responsibility in this time is to pray, to stay at home, so that we would not be part of the spread of this virus. Let us isolate ourselves, let us keep our social distance, let us be respectful of, of all the, the restrictions and all the advice that comes from our government. That is our responsibility. And while we pray, wait for God to do something special. I want to tell you this, what happened. The Bible says as they waited, they burst into worship and then they went down the next day. And by the time they got there, if you read the story, you will see our God is a great deliverer. And it shall deliver us. By the time they got to the battlefield, the Bible says that the enemy had killed themselves out. And all they had to do is to go there and pick up the treasures. My beloved brethren, it may seem that this will end in poverty for some of us. But God has got plans that is so big and so great that if we trust in him, by his grace, we shall indeed reap. The great harvest. So let us turn our minds, let us turn our attention upon him. Let us allow our God, let us allow our God to bring us through this and let us walk with him. Let us move as God says to move. Let us bow down with him in worship. Let us not lose sight of the fact that our God is an awesome God. Our God is a great God. He's the one who supplies all of our needs. And as we enter into a time of prayer and focus our attention that God may bring some healing to those who are sick. Think about our elders. Bring comfort to those who have lost loved ones. One ask God to give power and strength and protection. Build a health edge of protection around those who are in hospitals at the front line, our nurses and our doctors to grant wisdom and understanding to those scientists who are baffled by this, 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 this virus, COVID-19. Let us pray today. 
Let us see God like we've never before done. Let us move aside all the barriers that we may have to God's intervention and allow our God to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And our fear will be turned into joy. Listen to me now. God will, give, will bring us through in such a way that we shall come rejoicing because our God is a mighty and awesome God. May God bless us together as we seek him today in prayer.